I really don't have anything mm. significant to share today, but I kind of don't have anything better to do, so I'm going to make a video anyway. Um, let's just call it a vlog, you know, one of those video blog things. Which, by the way, I wish someone would work on renaming that because vlog, see, I'm stumbling over it. It just does not roll off the tongue. It's a very awkward word to say. We need to uh, start a movement to call it something else, you know, anything but vlog. So, um, anyway, and I'm doing this because, well, the reason I don't have anything better to do, that's a lie. I do. I have all kinds of things better to do. I just don't want to do any of them. Mainly because I don't feel like it. Um, I was in the hospital last weekend for three days with seriously unexpected, out of the blue, woke up one morning with colitis. And they determined it was from an infection. You know, it's not like a chronic ulcerative colitis or anything, fortunately, because let me tell you what, that was some misery. Um, but anyway, um, and I don't need, you know, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I hope you're better, you know, all that sympathy just makes me uncomfortable because I never know what to do with it. But um, it's good now. It's good. I'm home, and I'm just trying to um, take it easy and get a little bit more energy back because it kind of sapped all my strength. And I go back to the doctor on Monday for a checkup. Today is Friday. So I go back on Monday and... Um, I'm sure he's going to tell me that everything looks good. But I just don't really feel like doing much of anything else. So I'm just going to make this random video. It is what it is. There you go. So do you remember these safety pins? I showed them, I think, maybe the last video or the one before last. I got them from Ballard Designs. And my intention is to hang them on the wall and then hang little arts from them somehow. Well, here's the somehow that I came up with, which I think is going to be okay. I'm locking it for now. I had these curtain clip things, and they were all white to begin with. They're just white plastic curtain clippy things. You know the kind. And I took my, which I showed a couple of videos ago, I picked these up at Jerry's Artorama. These pins, one is just this random weird... Uh, permanent marker that they had all their open stock was on sale for I think it was $1.89 something like that so I bought this one just to try and then I tried because I haven't tried this before the Liquitex paint marker and I used it on here and let me tell you I'm really liking it um, I just got a bunch of the clips these black clip thingies this round part is plastic but the actual clip is metal and I just markered them all up with the black uh, permanent, this is an alcohol based marker, so I knew the alcohol would stick to the plastic and that's one reason I chose it. So markered everything all black and then went back with the um, turquoise Liquitex paint pen and just kind of went over the black, you know, not completely, just kind of random messy. And I may actually go back in with some bronze colored rub and buff and hit it here and there because it's, you know, as right now it's just too much contrast between the metal and the clips. And I think that that'll look, it won't be as noticeable once I get all the art hung from it because it's all going to be really colorful. But I still would like something to tie it in a little bit more. So I might just put some rub and buff on them. But anyway, there's where I am with that have to pick what little pieces of art I'm going to hang from them and decide where to hang them. That's going to be an issue. I'm not sure. I have an idea, but it really all depends on the size of the danglies. You know, it, <laughs> it's all about the size of the danglies. <laughs> okay. Oh, what else? Can let me find something that I can't possibly get inappropriate about. Here it is. We love this salad dressing, and we've been eating a lot of it. It's this um, Gerard's Italian dressing, and I get it at Kroger's. You know, it's just one of the 
kind of the fancy free free dressing. Not super expensive, but it's more than the regular craft dressing, but it's worth it. We really like it. We've been eating a lot of salads recently, but what I like best about it is the bottle. And I just washed this one out and it's still got water in it. It needs to dry. But I take the labels off and, oh, it's got one more piece. Where is it? Here. It has this gold foil uh, thingy around the neck, you know, when you buy it. So I just soak all that off in the sink, and then, you know, you've got instant, funky, free ephemera. Plus, you've got this really cool bottle, and I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I have several. I'm thinking they would make really neat oil lamps or something. So, uh, I'm not sure. Well, there's, there's another bit of randomness for what I've been doing today. Um, oh, okay, this, I came up with this after I got out of the hospital. When I went in, um, I went from the emergency room, so I didn't, I couldn't pack a bag or anything, but I had um, Jason and Taylor, you know, I made a list and told them what to pack and they brought things to me. And one of the things I asked for was my medicines because I have several health issues and I take like a handful of pills every morning. So I put them in one of these, you know, grandma organ pill organizer things just so that I have everything in there. Like, you know, it has the days of the week on the lids. I don't even pay attention to that. I just, I just like to separate them out so that I don't have to spend the time opening 12 bottles every morning. But this is what I had them in and a couple of my lids broke off. So, um, you know, I didn't have, I couldn't use those two compartments. So after I got out of the hospital and we had to go get some prescriptions filled at CVS, I picked me up a new little um, pill organizer thing. And then I came home and took the lids off of this, which actually, I wish I had saved them because, you know, they, they were Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, little plastic lids, but they were stuck down. There was a piece they were attached to that was stuck down in this ridge and it just pulled out in one piece. So it was really easy to take the lids off, and now I've got this instant little thing for, I'm thinking for either I could mix little paint colors in here, or if I'm working on a beading project and I've got lots of beads out I need to separate. I mean, that's just a good little compartment thing for something. I don't know what, but I'm not throwing it away. Bottom line. Um. Okay, a few videos ago, I showed some mono printing that I did with some alcohol inks and some watercolors, and I don't know what all else I did. But I just did a bunch of random papers. These are some of the papers that I did, and these are all phone book pages that are randomly painted on. That's my word today, random. Uh, my goal is to say it at least once in every sentence, and I think I've already done that. So there's my random phone book pages, and these are the random dictionary pages. And I have folded them into a random book of sorts, but that's as far as I've gotten. I don't know where to go from here. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to make books out of these, but I'm not really sure what it's going to end up looking like. but. You know, this is just um, this is just the planning phase. Okay, and then I made this, and it's another one of those I don't really know why, but I did. And you know, I save all of my junk mail envelopes, so I had all of these AT&T envelopes that I don't use because I pay online, but I'm still a little bit insecure about online payments, so I make sure that they still send me my paper bill, even though. I just toss it out, or actually I recycle it, <laughs> but I just can't let go and not get the paper bill. I know, I'm a little insane there, but um, baby steps, just baby steps. Anyway, gathered these up, stitched them together with the, what do you call that? Is it a blanket? It's not really a blanket stitch. I don't know. It has a name. Whatever it is, that's what I used. And I'm thinking there'll be some kind of, oh yeah, and then I glued this, just a scrap, can you see, scrap pad piece onto the flap of each one, mainly just because it fit. 
that was my criteria and my whole reason for doing it. <laughs> so um, that's what I have, and we're going to see where it goes from there. More just thoughts and planning. Today, okay, all I wanted to do today was paint index cards. That was my goal when I got up this morning because the index card a day thing at what's the website? Daisy Yellow? Is that right? I think it's Daisy Yellow. They do that index card a day thing every year and I wanted to do it this year but I was in the hospital so I'm already seven days behind. And so today my plan was just to paint index cards and get caught up so that I could do that. Well, I get up this morning, I hadn't been up maybe 20 minutes, and right one right after another, two charges came in on my PayPal account that I did not make. One was under $15. Somebody bought something off of eBay, and it's like a, a respirator. It, I mean, it just looks like some kind of zombie apocalypse respirator thing. I don't know what you use it for. The eBay store was had some kind of allergy product, so maybe it's with people with severe allergies. But I don't know. I wouldn't wear the thing, but, you know. It was $15, minor annoyance, and then I'm thinking, oh, bless their hearts. They've got severe allergies. They need to wear this horrendous mask. You know, I can't get too mad about that. No big deal. Went to the PayPal site, started filling out my claim. I've used PayPal since 2001. Never had a problem. Ever. That's, what, 12 years of no problem? That's pretty good. So, you know, I wasn't freaking out too bad. But before I even could get finished filling out the claim for that one, another one popped up for $185. Went to investigate that. Whoever got a hold of my PayPal information, and I still don't know how, bought a t-shirt, a plain knit, like short sleeve Henley is what it is, with a pocket on it made out of this tattered gray crocheted, look like a ridiculous doily. Okay, it's a man shirt. Bought it from this shop who ships from Italy. It's an Italian shop. $150 for that stupid stinking t-shirt and then another 30 nearly for shipping. Okay, that just made me mad. You know, not so much that they stole my PayPal account, but that they used it to buy an ugly shirt. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna steal from somebody, make it worth your while. <laughs> buy some quality something, not a t-shirt with a doily pocket for $185. So anyway, of course it took way more time than usual to get that squared away. And and it is or will be squared away. It was very obviously fraudulent. Um, but it kind of ruins my plan for the day. So here's my plan B. I'm going to, instead of doing the traditional index card a day thing, I'm going to do a Rolodex card a day. Kind of, you know, my own thing. Because I have this Rolodex. I've made a few cards out of, you know, just leftovers from other projects. And then I've traded cards. I have a few cards that I've gotten from other people that I've traded with. And then I have this stack of some that I've started, but they're not really finished. And some I've collaged on, and some of them are just, you know, from when I was painting. I made extra painted backgrounds. So, you know, they're just all different kinds. Um, not really finished. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of index card today, which I've totally failed at even getting started, I'm going to do Rolodex card today and maybe just start with these that I've already started on and see where I can go from there. So I may film some of the processes if it actually pans out and I can commit to doing it. So that is my goal for June and July is that. Um, oh, this might be actually helpful for someone at some point. I bought this really not too long ago. Um, it's a Fiskars paper cutter. Uh, I don't know. Sure cut 
Sister Shurka? Does that sound right? I don't know. Something like that. Anyway, it's one of their one of their nicer paper trimmers, you know, just the slidey, inexpensive ones. And I've had it less than a year. I don't think it's been but a few months. And I don't even remember what I was cutting, but somehow the blade got hung up on the wire. It has this little wire to guide you. You can even see that. And it frayed the wire. I mean, it's got little wire bits sticking out and, you know, it's bad. Like, I can't even use it now because the blade gets hung up on the frayed part. So, that kind of irritated me. And actually, when I bought it, I thought, okay, now how does how do they keep the blade from cutting the wire? You know, because it seemed to me that that would just be an obvious design flaw. Well, it is an obvious design flaw, and it can't be prevented, but Fiskars knows this. Because I went to their website, and all I had to do was go to their, um, like their warranty page, and fill out a claim form, and they even had a deal where you could send in a picture, so I sent a, a picture of my wire, and then a couple of days later, I got an email saying that they got it, um, and they are sending me a new, not just the wire, but a new rail. I don't know if it's this whole piece or what, but I'm thinking it's this whole piece. They send a whole new wire with a rail and instructions on how to replace it. Um, it's covered under their lifetime warranty. I did not know this. I did not realize that most Fiskars products have a lifetime warranty, at least against manufacturer's defects, which, I mean, obviously, this is not really a manufacturer defect, it's a design defect. This is going to happen, and I bet it's going to happen often. So, um, good to know if you ever, you know, if that's something that's holding you back from buying one of these trimmers, this is definitely the best trimmer I've ever used aside from the little wire issue. If that's holding you back, then um, take comfort in knowing that if this does happen to you, Fiskars will replace it at no cost to you. I didn't have to pay shipping or anything. You know, they're sending it out. I haven't received it yet, so I'll, I'll do another video when I get it and replace it to see how it goes. But I was very happy to hear that. That's darn good customer service right there. And I don't know why I have two blades in here. Don't ask me that. I, don't, I really don't know. Here's something else I've discovered, too. When I was taking the picture to send to Fiskars to show them the thing, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit because, you know, it had paint goobers and stuff all over it because it's just what everything in my house looks like. And I didn't, I didn't realize that this board right here has one of those plastic little, you know, board condom things. I don't know what it is, but it's obviously a little protective covering deal that I guess you're supposed to peel off and the instructions may have said peel it off before first use, but did I read those instructions? Heck no. So I'm leaving my little plastic sheath on my trimmer for as long as possible because it's obviously adding some layer of protection there. So there you go in case you didn't know. More than you ever wanted to know about your Fiskars paper trimmer. <sighs> what else can I bore you with? How about magazines? I've had a lot of downtime lately, so I've been looking through some old magazines and cutting stuff out. And in case you're curious as to what I look for and what I cut out of magazines, Here's a stack of stuff that I've cut out. And I've showed this before, but um, these may be some different magazines. I always look for big words, and it really doesn't matter what they say, because um, sometimes I will use, you know, the whole word in itself, but sometimes I'll just use the letters. Okay, this said shore. I really, really promise you that it said shore, but without the S, and my brain goes straight to where it shouldn't. I don't know if yours does too, but mine does. It really does, but it said shore. But those are just nice big letters that I will use definitely not as a whole. So that's really what I look for. Big letters and uh, words and phrases. And I have a binder that I'll stick them in. And I'll, you know, I'll keep them whole like this. And then as I need them and I cut 
letters out, I will stick the individual letters in my little letter box that I have. It has a little compartment for each letter. So that's one thing I look for in magazines. And you can find those in any kind of magazine. Um, we get two magazines in my house. I'm not, I really love to look through magazines, but I don't want to subscribe because they end up taking over my house. Because I, I look through them, I kind of go in cycles. Sometimes, you know, I'll just be dying to sit and just look through magazines, and then other times I won't touch one for months. So um, it's just not financially responsible to subscribe to a lot of them. We get National Geographic, and I sometimes I'll pull these um, envelopes out and use those in my junk mail stuff. And we get Texas Monthly. That's the other one. So a lot of the stuff that I tend to collect kind of looks the same because, you know, magazines all have a certain look, and they all have certain advertisers. So it can kind of start within the same, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, and I'll show you why in a minute. <coughs> National Geographic, I always pull the front and back cover off because it's thick and glossy. It's just a nice weight, and I will use that most likely to paint on. doesn't matter what uh, the image is on there. I just pull it off just for the weight of the paper. I'll also go through and pull out pages that have either images that I like, or colors, or textures, or like this one I say for two reasons. One, it's a fold out, which makes it a non-traditional sized piece of paper, which is a fun kind of rare thing, you know, and fold outs are fun. And, and okay, I like this image on the inside, and that one not so much, but I'm mesmerized by his face. His face is not attractive. In fact, it's kind of painful looking, and I can't stop looking at it, and I don't know why. So I don't know if I will end up actually using his face on something, or if I will just paint over the paper. I don't know. But, you know, this is one of those definite keepers, because it caught my eye for more than one reason. You know, sometimes that just has a lot of blue that I liked, and that was pretty, and so was that. You know, no reason. And these, these just need to be, see there's two of them, and they're both fold-outs, but I really like these insects. And I could just see those as a background for I don't know what, but they're awfully cool. So yeah, I'm going to have those. More fold-outs, and then just more, you know, pretty stuff. I like those butterflies. And those are houses in, gosh, where was that? Um, some little eastern country. And I was fascinated how they have these built up rooftop patio things where the women can go outside and get fresh air, but they have a little wall around it so that they can't be seen. You know, it's one of those, those Muslim countries where the women, they don't want the women to be seen. And I was, I was just fascinated by that. It just looked cool. I didn't want to really live that way, but it's interesting architecture is what I'm trying to say. So that's why I choose these. That one was really pretty. And then I also look for faces. I think I've talked about that before, because sometimes I'll use faces on a journal page. And if I don't use the whole face, I'll just cut out her eyeballs, because I'm always all about eyeballs. So if, you know, there's a model that has close-up of fun eyeballs or pretty eyes, then I'll pull that out. V. <laughs> okay, this is one of those situations of, you know, certain magazines have certain advertisers, so you see them a lot. These ads I see every month in Texas Monthly. And they've got this, you know, variety of different big metal fish. And with me and my little tiny attention span, just glancing at things and not paying attention, I glance at it, and what I see is Costa. Okay, for, I don't know, like at least over a year, I thought that this was an advertisement for Costa Rica, for people like to go fishing, like, like you know, because they have those deep sea fishing expeditions they do off Costa Rica. 
I just, because I glanced, it's a fish, and there's the word Costa. <laughs> the other day, I actually read the ad, and it's for some kind of glasses. Like, I don't know, sunglasses, I'm guessing, for fishermen and outdoorsmen, maybe. I don't know why. Um, you know, the the fish is, I mean, sure, it's sunglasses. I mean, surely you can wear them for other things besides fishing. Do you really need a specific type of sunglasses for fishing? Maybe you do. I don't know. I don't fish. So it's strange to me that the fish would be their, not only their central focus of their ad campaign, it's the only thing in their ad campaign. And then the tiny little eyeglasses down here, which I failed to see for at least a good year. Because these are um, glasses. It's not fishing in Costa Rica. So, learn something new every day. All right. Uh, I think the only other thing I have is my day book. I thought I would just do a quick flip <coughs> after I get a drink of water. Excuse me. I may have done a flip through this before. I can't remember. But like I said, I can't think of anything better to do today. So here we go. This is my day book that I carry in my purse that I just stick random daily stuff in. Nothing special. It started out as one of my typical junk journals, you know, with just um, random junky pages. And here's what I keep in it. In the front, I keep some of my, uh, okay, business cards. They're not really business cards. They're more like calling cards. They've got my Etsy shop address on them and my YouTube channel. So I keep a few of those in there, you know, in case I run into someone who cares. Then I've glued in things from stuff that I've done. This is from the um, Color Me Rad race and we had some friends in town that weekend and we went to Ikea and we went to Garden Ridge and we I took some pictures and stuck them in there we dyed Easter eggs um, I found a silly sign I don't know if you can see it someone put a sign up that says stop illegal signs they put an illegal sign on an illegal sign which is like pretty close to one of the stupidest things that I have ever seen. <laughs> I mean, not only is it hypocritical, it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> a little crazy there. I do a little bit of journaling, not much. Um, this is gym stuff from when we joined the gym. And we went to the mall one weekend and I took some pictures and wrote some stuff. and. We had our anniversary dinner at Del Frisco's for our 25th anniversary, and um, they had, when we got there, they gave us, you know, this really nice card, and then a couple of days later, when I got home, they sent another one just thanking us for spending a ginormous amount of money in the restaurant, but it was good. Um, let's see, bits and pieces from a Mother's Day gift and from our horse's West Nile vaccine, you know, Jason's test from the um, audiologist, and then all of the hearing aid brochures, because my poor man can't hear, and we really need to get that fixed. And this, I just stuck a pocket in there for some random stuff that I wanted a, a pocket for. Also, random stuff in a pocket. And this is from when I was in the hospital. I was on a clear liquid diet. I could only have clear liquids, which is basically broth and jello and apple juice. I discovered you cannot eat enough jello to make yourself feel full. And I tried. I tried really hard. And this is the off one of my hospital bracelets. And I just made a little tab out of that. And those were my bracelets. Um, 
hospital crafts. That was one of the medicine, the little paper cups they give you your medicine in. You know, it looks like exactly like the little ketchup cups at McDonald's. And a popsicle stick, because, oh yeah, I did get popsicles too. So I made a flower. And that is as far as I've gotten. So that's my daily, you know, stick stuff in, uh, day book, smash book, junk journal. And it gets beat up. You know, it's, it lives in my purse. And it gets, it takes quite a beating, but it's held up pretty well. And in the end, I will probably end up, you know, reinforcing the edges or even just plain recovering it. Um, covering over it with something else. I really don't know. Um, you know, the cover's getting chewed up doesn't bother me. That's just, that's part of the charm, I guess. So, that's all I have. Um, until next time, I'm going to go baby my colon for a while, because that's what I've been doing lately. And you know what? I think you should baby yours, too. Trust me on that. Be nice to your colon, because you do not want it to turn on you. I'm telling you, you do not want it. Okay, the end.